We spent the last few days dealing with the electric fields, the qualitative part of it and the quantitative part of it. But what's important to note that everything we've done with the electric fields has involved the field that's been caused by a point source like this. Maybe it's a positive point source. Maybe it's a negative point source like this. Maybe it was the field caused by that, or maybe it was the field experienced by a little experience route here. But the bottom line is, the field that we dealt with, whether we saw it directly in every question or not, was caused by a producer, a point source producer, that makes what we call a non-uniform field, a field that's not constant. Today we're going to look at the field between, that acts between parallel plates, or at least things that approximate parallel plates. We drew the diagram for the electric field between parallel plates the first day we introduced electric fields. If the top plate is positive and the bottom plate is negative, then the field will point downwards. If the plates are reversed, then the field's going to point upwards. What's the difference between the field that you see there between those parallel plates and the fields that I drew on the top line surrounding the positive and the negative point charge? What's the difference? What's the biggest fundamental difference between those fields? Yep. Good. They're going in one direction. In other words, those field lines between those plates are parallel. That's what we call a uniform electric field. A uniform electric field is a field that is the same everywhere. If I draw, I'll just use a different pen since I can't hold on to that one. If I draw a little point right there, the field strength that's experienced by that little point, that little proton or electron, whatever it is, is the same as the field would be here and here and here and here and here and everywhere else in between. It's a uniform electric field. As opposed to up here, the field strength is a certain value right here. It's a different value out there. We have non-uniform fields in those point sources. Now, we can use still the experience or equation when describing the field felt by something in between these parallel plates. Just the same as they could when we had an experiencer in this non-uniform field. Why? Because the experiencer equation isn't depend upon, depending on what caused the field. It's dependent upon what experiences the field. You can have an experiencer anywhere. The equation that describes that experiencer is the same. Hey, just a quick little aside, by the way. If I said the field is uniform, if the field is the same everywhere in between those plates, what do you know about the force in between the plates? Look at the experiencer equation. If Q isn't changing, and if E isn't changing, then what's happening to the force? It's not changing. So if the field is the same here, 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 and here, then the force on the particle would also be the same here, 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 or here. It's independent of where it's located unlike in the non-uniform field. Now, the producer equation that we've learned, E is equal to KQ over R squared, we can't use that here. We're not allowed to use that for parallel plates. Why? Because that's an equation that's specific to non-uniform fields. And we have a uniform field now. And these parallel plates. Or, it doesn't have to literally be parallel plates, right? Here's a cloud. Here's the ground directly beneath the cloud. The cloud is, the bottom of it at least, is negatively charged. The separation of charge in the Earth, which makes the, the, the top of the Earth positive. That's a uniform electric field as well. That's like parallel plates. It doesn't have to literally be parallel plates. Anywhere where you have something that's like parallel plates, we call it a uniform field, and we can't use that producer equation, E is equal to KQ over R squared. But we have to have some way of describing the field that's caused by these plates, just as we had some way, this way, of describing the field caused by these point sources. So we've got to introduce a new equation. The new equation is going to look like this, and it's going to be valid only for parallel plates. Electric field is equal to delta V. Delta V stands for 
potential difference. You ever heard that term? Potential difference. Probably not. Probably haven't heard it before. Potential difference is related to the energy of each of the charges. We'll talk more about it next week, but the brief Coles Notes version of it is that it's related to the energy of the charges. The potential difference across a battery is 1.5 volts, unless you have one of the little rectangle batteries where the potential difference is 9 volts, or a car battery where the potential difference is 12 volts. Or your outlet in your wall where the potential difference is 120 volts. Potential difference is related to the energy of individual charges. The units for potential difference are volts. It's a little bit confusing because the symbol is delta V, big V, and the units are V. Tell me what you think delta D stands for. Yep. No. It's a good guess, though. Good guess. Yep. Good. It's the distance between the plates. Displacement is inferring movement, right? Now, you may have a charge in between those plates that is moving. In fact, a lot of times we do have a charge that's moving. But how far it moves, how fast it moves, is irrelevant. Because here, I'm trying to determine the electric field not experienced by something, but that's caused by the plates. It doesn't matter what's in between the plates. Look at gravity again. Okay, You're sitting in Earth's gravitational field right now. But it's not 9.81 because you're sitting there or because there's four of you in the corner sitting there. It's, it's 9.81 because of the properties of the Earth. Okay, the field caused by these parallel plates is what it is because of the properties of the plates, not because of any kind of movement of charges in between the plates. So, Bryce, you're right. It's not how far something's moved or not even how far something is from one of the plates, but rather it's the distance between the plates. And the units for that is going to be meters. So if this is my distance between the plates right here. It's the value I'm always going to use. I don't care if lightning is striking coming down like this and an electron is here or here or here. D doesn't change. As long as the cloud stays in the same position above the Earth, D is the same. Distance between our plates or what approximates these plates. Let's take a look at the units for a second, though. Potential difference divided by distance. Volts divided by meters. The units for this is volts per meter. What were the units that we used before, right up until 10 seconds ago? Not coulombs, but close. Newtons per coulomb. The good news is one volt per meter is exactly equal to one newton per coulomb. So you're calculating the same thing you were calculating before. You're just assigning different units to it. I don't care what units you use. They're both valid. It's like back when we did momentum. Remember this? Momentum we said was kilograms meters per second. Momentum and impulse. But then later on, we said you could also use newtons times seconds. But they were exactly the same thing. Same deal here. It doesn't matter which one you use. Even if using this equation, you can still use volts per meter if you want. It doesn't matter. I like to kind of summarize this with a little Venn diagram. You guys know what a Venn diagram is? Math people, right? Everybody in physics is a math guy, right? Math person. First equation, the producer equation, right? Second one, that's the experiencer equation. Third one, Parallel plate equation. So I like to circle those. The red ones, the ones on the top, we're going to say those are valid when we have a non-uniform field. Right? Or in other words, a point source. E is equal to kq over r squared is the field that's caused by the point source. F over Q would be the field that was experienced by something in that field, in that non-uniform field. The bottom two equations are valid when we have a uniform field. The 
The top is when we have a point source. The bottom is when we have parallel plates, or something that's like parallel plates at least. The thing that's in the middle, E is equal to F over Q, it's valid all the time. Doesn't matter what kind of field we have. Doesn't matter what the situation is. If we have a field and we know something about the experiencer, we can use that middle equation. I want to take a look at just one example here and then we're done. 11.9 on 5.68, it says a cathode ray tube computer monitor. This kind of dates this book, right? This book's about seven or eight years old now. Um, back seven or eight years ago, sometimes we still used CRT computer monitors. Now we don't. You can't even buy them anymore. The TV in the corner of the room is a cathode ray tube. The big, huge, heavy, clunky TVs with poor picture quality are cathode ray tube TVs. The way they work is that they accelerate electrons to an incredibly high speed, and then they adjust the path of the electrons by a magnetic field, and they cause those electrons to hit the screen. If you look at that TV in the corner now, the screen is kind of grayish black right now, right? It's grayish black because it's painted. The back side of that glass is painted with a, with a special paint that will glow when a beam of electrons hits it. So the beam of electrons is directed to where we want to direct it to, it causes the screen to glow in certain ways. That's your picture. Beams of electrons hits the screen. That's your picture. In these TVs, I remember when I was younger, that's all we had, right? You get your big TV in your bonus room. You have it on for two hours. You turn it off, and then you walk up to it, and you could, like, you could rub your finger along the screen, and you could hear your finger rubbing along the screen by the static electricity. Does anybody have one of those TVs still? Okay. You ever done that? You ever... Why does it do that? Because there's so many electrons that have hit that screen, right? There's still some there. You're discharging the electrons from the screen as you do that. You can't do that, obviously, with newer TVs, LED or LCD TVs. Works on a completely different principle. So you got this, uh, this electrons that are accelerated from one plate to the other. They go through this little hole, and then they go and hit the screen. Maybe they're directed down here by a magnetic field or something to cause a different part of the screen to glow. We want to find the electric field between the plates. If we look back at our Venn diagram, trying to find an electric field between these two plates that's causing these electrons to accelerate, which two equations are we allowed to use here, red or blue? Yep, it'd be blue the uniform electric field equations, the parallel plate equations. Now, it looks like with what I have here, I'm going to use the parallel plate equation to solve it, right? Delta V over delta D. I get 2.5 times 10 to the 4, divide it by 1.2 times 10 to the minus 2. But, having said that, is there any reason why I couldn't use the middle equation there? At least, why I couldn't try the middle equation? No. Is there an electron experiencing a field? Sure, sure, I could try that one. I don't think it's going to be overly useful. I don't think I have enough givens, but it's a valid equation. Is there any reason why I could not try the top equation? Absolutely, there's a reason. Because that's only valid on a non-uniform field, and i got a uniform field here. So this is what it's going to be, 2.5 divided by... 1.2, I believe, is 2.08 times 10 to the 6, was it? What units would we use? Volts per meter, or we could use newtons per coulomb. Either one of those would be good. Good? All right. You got two questions to do for homework with that, and then that's it. And in addition to the two questions, by the way, you do have that quiz tomorrow on electric fields, but not parallel plate electric fields, not the stuff that we did brand new today, okay?